I think we are on, so I don't see anything over here. Let me see. People will be coming on, I'm sure. There we go. I haven't seen this YouTube set up before. Oh, yeah. And um, so we don't have the camera actually facing us. We can't really see ourselves because we're going to be doing some tutorials later. Becky's going to be doing that. I guess we can see ourselves on here. So that's good. Nobody, nobody hanging out yet, but that's okay. It's just a little delayed. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably, yeah, yeah. probably. Okay. So um, Becky is with us. Hello. Becky good Sue morning. is actually on the airplane right now and uh, coming back home. But uh, we've been really lucky to have Liz was with us last week. Well, in the first time we did, we did when she was in Denver at the time, but. Um, so Be yeah, Liz was here last year. We were doing that fun dining, mm -hmm. and um, and then Becky is here, and we always know that Becky comes with some great knowledge, and she is our one of our beginning knitting teachers, and she teaches teaches a basic class. Basic class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'm always excited to see what you are going to bring us today. The other thing we're going to be talking about is um, a big knit along that we're going to kick off, but we are going to wait a little bit to talk about that. So um, I was just asking Becky, what are you watching on TV these days? Oh, I watch um, On the Basis of Sex, a movie about Ruth Bader Ginsburg from like a couple years ago, and then I'm on CD3 with Bridget. So you might want to talk a little louder. Okay. This, our mic's a little farther away than you. Oh, know. okay. And so Bridgerton. Season three of Bridgerton. Okay. It's kind of a soap opera, but it's fun. I, it kind of is, yeah. right? I it's think fun. that's why the demise of soap operas is because now there's all the nighttime soaps, and maybe there's you know more people watching, I guess, at night. But I yeah. mean, when you watch it anytime, day or night. What the thing I love about Bridgerton is just the outlandish yeah. hair, Costumes, really, the hair, right? Jewelry. It's crazy. The setting. And it's a little bit unconventional. Yeah. So casting is really fun. Right. But so, which I love. Yeah. I love that. I think sometimes you gotta pick the right, the right actor for the right, right uh, personality and that kind of thing. So yeah, I've honest. I'll be honest. I've really seen more pictures of Bridgerton oh, okay. than, than actually watching. I it. started watching. I'm probably I'm in season one. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I have a long way to go. <laughs> but it's kind of fun. Yeah. It's a little distraction I, at night. I've um I'm reading an interesting book. Um, it's called When Women Were Dragons. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the author, but um, our friend Kathy Bauman recommended it to okay. me. And um, it's sort of a, the author is a youth, uh, a YA author normally. Mm -hmm. um, so she's kind of ventured into some more adult stuff, but it's it it takes place in the 50s. Okay. And, um, and really, literally, the, the title is literal. And now I'm wondering, will it be a movie? Because there's some oh, okay. like kind of like, you know, supernatural stuff. Obviously, that would be kind of cool yeah. to see in a movie. So, when women were dragons. So I'm reading that. Okay. Um, so let's um, let's talk about what Miss Becky's wearing today, as far as like work in progress. But hers is I'm a finished finish object. As That's of right. last night. This, if you haven't recognized it, it's actually. The Felix. Felix yeah. cardigan. Yep. For sure is a pattern. And, but, it's um, cardigan. but what did you make it out of? I made it out of pastoral. Yeah, which is sort of an unconventional yarn for this project. You can have. I don't. I haven't seen it ever, honestly. But I think it's a great. I love. It really shows off yeah, that. It does. Yeah. This and I really like the way it fits. I. I like now you the haven't. Really, you haven't actually blocked it out yet, have you? I have not. I've just finished some I know, buttons on and the last buttons night. on here are so cute, you guys. I can't do a close up, but I'll take a close up and I'll put it on our story. But it's um, they're they look like little Zauber ball yarn balls, so right. it's kind of like that. I know it's fun, yeah. So I think it's so you did a great very job. happy with how this has turned out. I really like the sleeve length. Did you have yeah. to alter like any like no, I just like because you've already knit the Felix before, I made it as a pullover. Do you remember like needle size wise? Did you had to really change that much? No, nope. I used I think ten size ten needle, which is the yarn size needle I got today. And yeah, yeah, so I it was pretty easy. I like it. 
pretty straightforward. I really am happy with how it turned out. Very simple. I am not wearing any finished bobbins. Well, and I was going to say, I made this in a different pattern. I used this yarn in a different pattern that was a tank, but it was so heavy, I didn't really like it. So I, I ripped I it out a couple it. of years like, ago. I felt like you, you wore it once. I did, and it was just like so a grew. a local shop. There's a new shop just down the street. Um, if you're from Billings, it's where Desmond's used to be, which was a men's store. And I, uh, I'm still here. So anyway, it's called My Fair Lady, and um, I got the vest on the top there. So I thought it was kind of fun for summertime. So yeah. Um, so let's talk about our works in progress. Do you want to do yours first? Okay. Um, this I am working on Explosion Row, I believe. Right, yep. Mm -hmm. From the Marls book, the Modern Daily Living Marls yep. book. I made one two years ago as a gift Gosh, to give. It feels so thick here, but it's going to feel like this. Yeah, like yeah here's So one. you make four of these panels and join them together, and you get a great throw. Oh, yeah. Throw for the so cow. this panel was made by Susan Germer. I don't know if she's ever going to want this back, but we sure like having it in the store. Um, so the Marls is one of the modern daily knitting books, which we just got a restock of this. So um, it uses felted tweed. You it's two two skeins, and then you change one color at a time for each each little section. And I feel like they sort of set it up. I want to say kind of like a Sudoku sort of like the way they put that. There's yeah. some mathematical sequence. Well, I'm just following what they're telling me. I'm well, yeah, and I it. would too, so but I do feel yeah. like they set up some kind yeah, of mathematical sequence yeah. for that. So, um, well, I made it, gave away as a gift, and when I finished it and put it all together, I thought, I don't want to give this away. I'm so I'm it. not sure how much of what we're showing you can see because I had to move the camera back because this lady is so <laughs> tall and I am so short. I probably should like stand on maybe like a, a stool. So yeah. anyway, this is a really great if you're looking for a good blanket pattern. This is one. It's satisfying. It's fun because you get to change colors all the time. Yeah. And the pattern is super simple. Yeah. So once you know what you're doing, you're just kind of cruising along and you go, oh, I'm, I'm your color combination. What's that going to look like? Well, some people have sort of been following my little project. Right. So I'm making a sweater. Um, it's called the Luminos. It's by Yamagara. And I just found out today that her first name is, I think it's Beatrice. I was just looking at, so I, was, I was trying to find some information on, like her from, luckily she has a, a knitting group on um, Ravelry and she has like a whole test thread. Okay. So I kind of went through those to see if I really messed up. So um, so I, you start at the bottom, let me find my spot here. So I did a little steaming so it, Hedgehog fibers for the stripes. So kind of the way it works is 
Um, you do the little wedge, and then you're going to um, knit them all together. But you're, now I'm split for the sleeves. So I'm really only working on the front part right now. And then when I you know, get about to here, I guess, then I'll work on the back. And there's like different sequences of stripes. And I already messed up. So because I was, there's different sizes, there's different size, you know, instructions. So sizes one through what does this, and then sizes this through that does that. And um, there was a lot of the first part, and so I kind of got a little bit mixed up on where I was. But I don't think, I think I missed the mark by one inch, so oh. I think I will live. So anyway, I, I do think this is going to be really pretty, and um, this is a great way for, you know, your stash. Like if you have that one that one stripey sock yarn that you're not really sure, or not stripey, but just the beautiful multicolor that you couldn't live without. I think if you match it up with a um, solid. with a solid or something mm -hmm. contrasty, that's really going to be pretty. So I'm plugging away on that. So yeah, that's my color. Hard to see, but it's a hedgehog color. So that's that's what's up. So. Um, we wanted to, um, so I, we started getting a yarn called a Dando Silk Plus. So Dando is, um, it's Yumiko Alexander. This is Silk Plus, it's like a fingering weight silk and cotton. So we do have this, but she also has another yarn called Linen. And it's just, that's just what it is. And we had a sample, I worked up a swatch. And I actually worked this up because I wanted to see how it worked with the Duchesne. And actually, it's perfect. Like, this is perfect. It seems like really great. It's so soft. It's really wonderful. And then I watched a fiber side chat with Yumiko Alexander. And because I kind of been waffling about, you know, telling Sue, I don't know. She kind of wanted it. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know yet. Um, so anyway, she is starting a knit along and I got so excited. I've ordered the yarn. It's coming. I'm sure it will be here this week. Um, it's for her sweater. Here, you want to put this up there? It's called joinery. And so that is with this new linen. It's a worsted weight. It's really fun. You can pick a couple colors to put it together with. She has um, another little version of that with the lighter color. So I just think this is so fun and what a fun summer sweater it would be. It's knit on a size nine needle. It's gonna go fast. It's got some interesting technique. Now one thing she said, she doesn't do a lot of drape. She doesn't do a lot of shaping. And the reason is, is because linen yarns and silk have so much drape that your body just naturally does the shaping. For it. So um, I just thought this would be really fun. Now I understand not everybody might want to do this. I think this is really fun. I'm going to cast on for this even while I'm doing the other one. But she has a few other patterns. Hey, you want to pop those over there now sure. that you're into that? Yeah. Um, so a couple other patterns that she has that you might find interesting. That one is called White Caps. And that actually uses the Silk Plus that we have in the shop right now. So um, I think that can be really fun. I think that's gorgeous. That one, what's that one called? Does it have on the back? Um, plum. plum. Oh, I don't remember that one, but yeah. I'll fi figure it out. But okay. this one's really fun, and it has a lot of that little detailing kind of in the corner. She does that lace work. So that one, I think, is the linen yarn. So I think she's got okay. some great summer options, but I do think that you would, I think most people would just love any of, they could make, she's got a lot of. Uh, they seem very wearable. They are, and she's got a lot of mods. So you can make them wide and short, mm -hmm. or you can make them taller and more narrow. So depending on how you want to wear it, or like on this one, you maybe don't have to, you know, be doing the long sleeves. You can do her short sleeves. Um, so from, it was really interesting to hear her uh, talk about her like design process because she is from Japan, um, and uh, she was designing there too, and she was using wools and things like that. But then she got married and she moved to 
Arizona. Oh. And she realized that probably the wools weren't going to work for her, and she ended up designing her own yarns. Okay. Um, and so that's how all of these yarns came about. She has three. There's this one, there's the linen, and then there's a one called Cotton Fine, which we haven't gotten yet, but you never know about that. Um, and she, yeah, she had some really great tri tips on, um, you know, how to care for it, and, and I'd be happy to share those, um, you know, if you decide to, you know, do these. So um, there's no cost involved, really, um, as far as, you know, a lot of our knit alongs, but also it's part of the shirties. Like, oh, you would be able to probably get this done yeah, before nine, July yeah. 31st. I think this would totally, totally. get done. So I'm, yeah. um, so I'm just formally inviting you to join the knit along for the Dando joinery. So that's, we're, join the joinery. So and we're happy to have you. Okay. Yeah, and it's that yarn should be here, um, I'm thinking by Friday. So, okay. so surprise, Sue, we're doing a knit along. <laughs> Um, the other thing that we have in this shop is lots of rainbow yarn. Uh, so we, our staff member Liz, she uh, designed and di dyed these two yarns that she has. One she calls the Ruckus Rainbow, and this one is Moody Hughes. So if you're into rainbows, and a lot of people tend to be Bright in colors. June, it'd be a great a yarn. We have a, the the yarn pride from uh, Brown Mountain. I've got quite a bit of that. I've got some more coming actually. And then this one from Western Sky Knits is called Bright Spot Bright. So it's kind of a fun way. It's got that little pop, so it'd be great for like any of that design pooling or plan pooling. Yeah, great sock yarn. And of course, Noro, the original rainbow yarn company. This one's just Edo. It's um, the giant stain, so that would be really four. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise. Yeah, I mean, it does have a name, but I never oh. use it. <laughs> um, and it. then a class that we're doing. I'm sorry, I'm kind of ripping through this. I, you know, it's always a little bit different when we have a different program right, right. here. But um, we're, trying to demo we're doing uh, a little class with our friend Rose with these little s'mores here. Flip, flip that out of the camera. Okay. They're so Very cute. cute. So that, um, those are just so cute and um, it's actually, um, you should know how to crochet. You already should know that. It's not a learn to crochet class, but it's a, a first project into the Amagurumi. So um, she said you could totally get um, the pieces Amagurumi done. Amagurumi is all the little figurines? Yes, it's Japanese for toys. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they're pretty cute. So okay. sign up for that. All right. So like the big ta-da today is is Becky. She's gonna do some tutorials. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit so we can have her uh, an experiment have her to see how this goes. Yeah. So let us begin. All right. So whoops. I'm gonna bring the camera over here to Miss Becky. And Linda asked me to like demo some things, so I thought, okay, this is a new thing I'm doing that I've learned from Patty Lyon on how okay. to do the SSK. So a in. new SSK. So normally, show us a normal SSK. Right. Okay, let me do a couple stitches just to get in here. And normally you do slip, slip, slip. go in the front, and knit. And I've right. done that for years and said slip, slip, knit. So Patty Lyon's got a lot of okay. stuff out there. So All right. The new so way is catch it a zip to knit. For your well, wait. First one. Why are we going to do it a different way? Well, it's a little quicker, faster, and it lays smoother and okay. flatter. I All found. right. Okay. Let's see what so you're going to you slip. Catch it as if you're knitting. Right. But Go before. In the back one. Okay. And then you just knit them together. Let me knit another one. Yeah. Do one more. And we can look at the two of them. So it does tend to lay a little flatter and is more invisible. So if you uh -huh. want it to I do. Yeah, I see that. Do okay, it do, do one, one more time. Cuz it is okay. you kind of kind of don't really okay, you so move you, right to the back right away. And then you go right to the back and catch it in the back. Okay. And then you're going to knit the whole thing. Okay. I've done like where you slip as if to purl, slip as, slip as if, if to, to knit, knit and yes, then I've put those together. Too. But I've yeah, that too. one is really good. 
Oak, yeah, I can totally see the difference. Yeah. This okay. Is the original one. It kind of lays on top more. Uh huh. And this just is a little smoother and flatter. So awesome. just kind of a different thing to play with. Okay, the other thing, um, people always get panicked about dropping stitches. So I just thought I'd show a couple oh, of Oh, oh, some good drop stitch. Just, I mean, it's pretty basic, and you maybe already all know this. But, you know, if you have a crochet Somebody handy, will learn it, I'm sure, from here. So okay. those so little hooks are pretty hook, handy. handy. Um, I okay. like to teach both techniques. I'm going to show you another way, too, because everybody's different. So you find, figure out where the lowest rung of your ladder is, and then you pull them through. If you're not familiar with a crochet hook, you can use your fingers to lift it over. And then when you get to the top, you're going to put it on the needle that does not have the working yarn. And on it goes, ready to go. Okay. Make sure you've got it mounted correctly. You don't get it backwards. Okay, if you do not Here, have go a back. Hook, okay, when oh, you okay. when you finish that, t talk about the backwards okay, stitch, well. okay? Okay, so if you don't have a crochet <laughs> hook, the other way you can do it is you go into the front of that stitch just like you did with the crochet hook. Find the lowest rung, same thing. They're sitting there together, now you do like a bind off. That's, yeah, I probably do mine more like that. Some people prefer this way, some people like the other way. So, Sometimes question uh, for me, and, um, so I've noticed, like, if I'm working on the pearl side. It's harder. It's harder. So I will turn to the knit side to do it. And that's what I it. teach. Okay. It's too confusing to try and do both. Okay. So just flip it around so you've got the knit side facing you. So then when you go to put it on the needle, if you go into the front of a stitch, it will mount it the correct way. The wrong way is when the back leg is leading. Okay. So to fix that, you but just, you, but couldn't you just knit? You can, you can knit, knit into the back, the back of, of the stitch, you, right? And that will automatically that, fix or it. Or you can flip it around. I've come across some knitters lately that are wrapping their pearls the wrong way, wrong way. But puts, then they end up fixing it on the knit side. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of people do that, or that, okay. I, that's not that uncommon. Okay. So the other thing okay. I was going to talk about is um, sometimes I might, I don't know, I make a lot of mistakes. Yep. So, I find sometimes I have to rip out two or three or four rows. Well, we've got, that doesn't work. Okay. okay. We'll just stick with your hands okay. here. So occasionally I've been like, I have to rip this out, and I don't want to do it one row at a time. So I'll rip out oh. two rows at the same time. Two at the same time. But then could you apply that to just about any amount of rows technically? Yes, you can. Right. I've, I've done four once. I don't <laughs> recommend that. So I'm instead of dropping one. Normally if I was okay. going to undo. If I have to undo a row, you know, you kind of go in here. Okay, right. But I like to flip around backwards because it's easier for me. I have found that too. Hey, Walter. Okay, so I'm going to undo the, I'm just going to undo this. So now I've got the first stitch. I'm gonna, I'll deal with that later. So I've got, normally I would go in here. That's undoing one row. Right. But I'm going to go in one below. One, oh, wow. Okay. And then take that one out and oh. that one out. Okay. Now it's a little more straightforward of what to see here. Uh huh. So okay. I've got two that I'm undoing. So I've gone okay. in instead of the top one like normal. Right. I'm going one below. Okay. Just them both out. keep doing that. That's cool. Because then you're going to have like two strands yes. in the back of your piece. Until you get to the end and then they both free They'll do. Oh, wow. That really speeds up a process that I actually, in my project I'm working on, I... Have you never done this? Uh, no, I haven't. But I can see that I thought about ripping back what I was working on on my, on my little sweater uh -huh. because I know I, yeah. I messed up a little bit. But, I, I, of course, me, I'm going to push forward. I don't want to waste those stitches. Right. But this is a lot better. You're not wasting time taking yeah. out yeah so even yeah huh what a great idea so all I right am, you're almost there aren't I you am almost there two at a time oh, that one popped out a little bit before i got it on the needle okay you're okay so one more there there yeah, it is oh right. wow okay much there. faster much faster that's incredible yeah, yeah. okay so let's say you've got i'm gonna pull this off the Okay. Let's say you had to rip out more than a couple of rows. Okay. That's the other unwanted By the scenario. way, Becky got her nails done yesterday just for this. Doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Okay, so. Okay, and what, do, what to, are we doing here? If I have to rip out many rows, 
what I like to do is rip out to the row above the one that wants to, that I that I need to put back on the needle. Okay. So then, if you've ever tried catching those live stitches on top, they disappear, they vanish, you get a big mess at the end. So I found that if I rip out to the row above where I want, okay, then I undo the first couple of stitches right. and put those on the needle, and then I unknit it as I put it back on. Hmm. I was actually watching Becky do it, and so I moved my camera. I apologize. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of in the back sort of, of that. Sort of similar to undoing the row. Right. And just an FYI, if you go into the front of a stitch, it will always put it on the needle the correct way. So this was a knit stitch, so I'm technically going into the front of it, even though I'm working this oh, direction. Oh, okay. Because going into the front always mounts it. But if you go leader. in, if you go in the other way, if I went in this way, I'd be putting it on backwards. Right, which I do that because then you can fix it later. Yeah, I feel like it's a lot faster. Well, but it's for me, used to. yeah, right. And if you go like that one, I'm putting on there wrong, just because it's easier to get it on. Uh huh. And then I've undone it, so I put it back on the needles that way. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, so hopefully those are those some are little a, things that. Maybe you knew it already, maybe you didn't. Maybe you knew how to do that already, or maybe you didn't, I don't know. Let's but see if I can get you back in view here. <laughs> there you are. Okay, well, that was pretty fun. Yeah. So, so if you have any other ideas of things you're wondering about. Yeah, and yeah, let us that know. Worked, we can invite Becky back, it. but maybe we should be scheduling a fix-it class, oh. because yeah. um, if that didn't make any sense to you, <laughs> She'll make sense of it later. Yeah, fix so. the class is kind of fun. It's just two hours, meets one time, and I like teaching it because people are like, oh, I didn't know that time. Oh, that was easy. A lot of light bulb moments. And it's kind of I fun. call it the F up class. Yeah. <laughs> Not basic. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that, I, yeah. you, I've talked to so many people, they're like, I, I just rip out. I'll start again. I'll start the whole project again. And that's so defeating. It's like you don't have to go back to square one. Right. Nobody wants to go back to square one. I know there's some great videos out there like um, how to fix lace, like pinned out though, like they do. Right. Like, yeah. Which I think is very intriguing, but right. I don't really do lace too often. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, I've seen those too. And I have, un I've redone some lace things. Mixed success on doing that personally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I think about sometimes. well, thank you, Becky. Okay. I always appreciate um, your view on things and how, uh, you know, different ways to fix things. Well, it's so nice to have a community. Like, I love it when people come in and they're like, I'm stuck, I don't know, I, you know, I'm lost, whatever. It's kind of nice to be able to have that support of them bringing stuff out. I know, and I tell everybody that comes in, do not feel like you're out there on your own. I mean, yeah, maybe a friend is teaching you, but you know for a fact she is not going to want to teach you, like, at midnight. But, um, so if that well, happens, you need to go to bed. But um, yeah. come back and see us. Any of us will be happy to help right. you. So get back on track. Yeah. Okay, so you need to keep talking for just a oh, minute. okay. Well, I'm going to go back to the camera because I think we're done. So um, okay. next week, Sue will be back. And hopefully we'll have our new yarn here that we can talk about our fun yeah. project. Yeah. So when I learned that there was no YouTube, trying to teach yourself anything out of a book is not <laughs> super easy. That's, I this. totally did that. Yeah. Yep, I totally did. All right, everybody, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.